The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. And welcome in to the Ash Holds Unfiltered Cigar Radio. We've got an extra special show today and an extra special guest too. So, here's your host, that card-carrying member of the Cigar Cognoscente, Pastor Padron Dan, the man. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of The Ash Holes. As usual, broadcast live from the Serena Royale stage at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. And it's time to kick back and light up as we turn this Wednesday into Ash Wednesday. We're always entertaining. We're generally unscripted and totally unfiltered. You can stream and download us on iHeartRadio, Facebook, YouTube, iTunes, Podbean, Spotify, and of course, theashholes.net. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at The Ash Holes and on Instagram at Ash Holes Radio. Uh, we are a full house today. We've got Aaron, we've got Oliver, and we have Jose Dominguez Jr. Gracias, with us. gracias. Very nice to see you again. Muy, muy bien, muy bueno verte a ti también. <laughs> we'll go on. Ah, uh, sí. Yeah, sí. That's a good. Es sí. un gusto. Muy bueno. <laughs> Jose, un gusto. Como <laughs> siempre. Como uh, siempre. Un gusto verte, mi amigo, también. <laughs> Gracias. All right, I'm totally lost now. <laughs> <laughs> Should I switch back to English? Yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a, yeah, sure. you know, one of the jokes that is very, very true is, you know, if you know three languages, you're trilingual. If you know two languages, you're bilingual. If you know one, you're American. You're American. <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty accurate. Pretty much, pretty much the way it is. And, you know, when Jose Dominguez is on, we smoke Jose Dominguez because why not? He's the guy. And so we're smoking his uh, Maduro Bellicoso. Yep. And uh, we're just lighting that up. This was a Memorial Day weekend. Did you guys do anything for that? Um, I, yeah. Well, Dominican Republic doesn't celebrate That's Memorial right. Day weekend, so. No, you but wouldn't. Yeah. Work as usual. Yeah, it was work as usual. <laughs> <laughs> but holiday tomorrow. Uh, yeah, Corpus Christi is a religious okay. holiday. Uh, mm -hmm. Big, big, big thing down there. They do a lot of uh, uh, Via Crucis, which is the, the path of Jesus and uh going through all the Jesus uh, steps that he went through the crucifixion. So I won't get a, a lot into that. But, yeah, that's a big holiday tomorrow in the Dominican, uh, obviously. Everybody gets a day off tomorrow. Hmm. Nice. Including you? No, I'm in the <laughs> States now. So I got to adjust myself to the United States uh, schedule. Yeah, yeah, tomorrow's Thursday. It's a working yeah. day. Yeah. I mean, there's yeah. nothing like a Thursday holiday, which means Friday's productivity yeah. is going to be There's nothing. Nobody's down. showing up. Yes. <laughs> no one's showing up yes. for a Friday after that. No, usually most people don't. Yeah. yeah. Half of the factory will be there on, on, on Friday anyways. I was going to ask, did, did most people just take Friday off? Yeah, they just don't go. They know? just don't go. They, most of them are hangover. <laughs> yeah. That is, you know, it's what happens. It's just like wow. That. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Aaron, you know, you were in the States for Memorial Day weekend. Yeah, did you yeah. do anything worth yeah. talking about? I mean, I you know, normal cookouts, you know, yeah. just did some yard work. Just I was yard getting everything work. out of the w way this weekend because this coming weekend I've got another wedding. And so another wedding. Kind of eat up my whole weekend and, you know, busyness. Mm -hmm. Oliver, what about you? You're, you're, I don't even know what you look like anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, this time I Is traveled. Is that him, really? Right. This time I traveled more for personal as opposed to business. I decided to join the thousands hundreds of thousands of people driving uh so friday night uh, left for a memorial day tournament baseball tournament for my son mm -hmm. in long island mm. so Ooh, battle traffic we gosh. got that it wasn't it wasn't too bad uh heading down we took the uh the ferry over from bridgeport but the uh baseball tournament we played on saturday sunday was rained out and uh and monday was you know just not going to be an option so we headed back uh, Saturday night and kind of salvaged what oh, we could. Oh, that's not so bad. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So did the you know did the parade thing? You got to you know pay respects to uh, what it means instead of you know the actual barbecues and, and drinking. <laughs> right. Yeah, you didn't really. I mean, it was the weather was not cooperating for that. No. Definitely not. I mean, that's um, you know th my my weekend was very much you know home with the kids and doing the cookout. Now my wife had to work on Memorial Day, so it was just me, the girls at home. And that was nice. But it was too cold to really go out and really just sit in the yard or do yard work or anything like that. So we actually had a fire going. Hmm. 
inside wow. in the fireplace. Yeah, wow. Late <laughs> it's May. May. I mean, here yeah. it is, the unofficial kickoff of summer, yeah. and we're all huddled inside the house trying to get warm. Right. Wow. It's and crazy. then like, every other year, it'll be like 90s plus out. You know, <laughs> yeah. more, it's just, yeah. it's not predictable. Yeah, well, Saturday was fantastic, you know, yeah. and Friday was like 90, and, and yesterday, Sunday was yesterday 50. Yesterday was too, so <laughs> wow. it's yeah. crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. When did you get up into the into the states? Did you just get here today? No, no, I got in. Uh, well, I got into um, here in New Hampshire mm-hmm. yesterday, but I've been traveling the states uh, since uh, last week. So I was actually in the states on Memorial Weekend, but since my people weren't, you know, they were they just kept calling. I was like, I'm on a holiday, leave me alone. But they, they don't understand that. Either. They don't understand. That's too bad. That's but yeah, bad. I mean, I've been traveling since uh, Sunday. Mm-hmm. I'll be probably traveling for another 10 days 10 12 days before i'm back mm-hmm. and uh it is what it is you know well tell us about the this particular cigar we're smoking this is the bellicoso and in, in the uh, maduro line of your jose dominguez tell us a little bit about the that. six and a half by 52 bellicoso uh if my favorite second size on the whole jose dominguez lineup my the only top by the fino which is okay. uh 44 by six i tend to like Smaller ring gauges because, mm-hmm. uh, in my opinion, they tend to make the cigar, the blend, a little more potent, mm-hmm. give you the true nature of the blend. So I tend to go for the smaller ring gauges, but this is my my second favorite just because of how the 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 size profiles the blend. It creates that sweetness uh, that I look for. I'm a, I'm a sweet tooth guy, so I'm mm-hmm. always craving for sweetness. That's why I like Maduro cigars. And uh, more particularly, I really enjoy Mexican and uh, Brazilian tobaccos just because of that particular characteristic that I'm always looking for. So uh, being said, this cigar, the blend, is made with... Uh, Mexican San Andreas wrapper, mm-hmm. then uh, Indonesia's bi- Indonesian binder, and it has a concoction of Dominican and USA tobaccos, and it has two different USA broadleaf tobacco, one from Pennsylvania, one from Connecticut, mm. and then it has three different Dominican tobaccos in it. Wow. Different primings of Cuban seed grown in different regions of mm-hmm. the country. Mm. It, the the uh, taste on the cigar is great. Mm. You know, that uh, San Andreas wrapper really kind of right. sets it up with that deep earthy. Yep. But it's very, it is a very sweet yeah. wrapper. And mm. it has like a, a chocolate over undertone on mm-hmm. it that, you know, just kind of lingers and lingers. It's, that's usually what I look for. This is why it's my favorite blend. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, the, I know you like the smaller ring gauges. Do you think that, you know, the fact that the Bellicoso, you know, changes the, the tip, is that one of the reasons this is a favorite for you? If you were to ask me, I would still say that the Fino gives you a better profile. It gives mm-hmm. you a better uh, uh, sample of that sweetness into it because it compacts the flavors a lot more. The smaller the ring gauge, the more it's going to compact the flavors and the more of the true nature of the blend that you're going to take. Yeah, very smooth retrohale. I mean, you don't even feel it. No, that's Uh, not overpowering. It fills your mouth, but it's not overpowering. You you don't feel it. It, No no burn. You you taste taste it. it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. there's no burn whatsoever. No, there's not like a pepper sting or anything in the retro. Which is no, really nice. Not at all. Not at all. Um, I finished a coffee just before starting this, and and on the retro, I'm getting almost the the sweetness it reminds me of like a floral sweetness, um, which usually I think it's kind of buried in the the earthiness and some of the chocolate mm-hmm. notes. But having the, kind of the coffee muting my tongue out a little bit, yeah. <laughs> you know, I get <laughs> to pick up that. those more <laughs> subtle flavors. Yeah, and I, I think using the Mexican San Andres, looking at the wrapper. It's a beautiful wrapper. Mm-hmm. It but is, that's, yeah. A lot of Mexican San Andreas, sometimes they're a little harsh uh, in appearance, mm. a little, look a little rougher. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the Connecticut, like a Connecticut Broadleaf as it's well. It's just a matter of the selection that you're getting. Yeah. You know, uh, you but can yeah, get... Yeah, you're selecting a, Yeah, you, you yeah. can get from Mexico uh, uh, the premium wrapper grade from the top A, you know, A grade wrapper to down to binder and anything in between. So mm. it all depends on what kind of tobacco you get, how well you ferment it. Mm. That's another key point to it. it. It not only goes to the quality of the tobacco itself, but how do you process it? What do you do to it to get it to that color and consistency? Mm. So what do you do with, with this particular wrapper on this cigar? You know, how do you process that once you, once you get it? When we get the, ba- the tobacco, the tobacco is supposedly already processed. And it is. But we like to go supposedly. a little leeways. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, it is processed. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, when we get it, it's usually already two years old from the moment mm-hmm. that it was cropped. But we like to go in a little bit, a little step uh, forward. So we take 
all the tobacco out mm -hmm. and we put it in what people call pilones, right. which mm -hmm. is a, a tobacco bed. Mm -hmm. And we ferment it for another three months. We process our own and then we repack it again and leave it there for another six months before we use it. Hmm. Oh, so nine months total. Before nine months even. before we use it, after we receive it. Hmm. That, that puts a big, you know, uh, bunch of time before you can even, you know, so you have to have a, quite a uh, bit of stock in, in, mm. in, that in is, your warehouse before you can even start. That is, the main, that is the main drawback of this uh, particular, if you want to look at the cigar industry as a business, it is one of the main drawbacks is that for you to be able to make a quality product, you need to have uh, a big amount of inventory always on hand aging mm -hmm. to be prepared to use in one, two, three, four years, like our crops. Mm -hmm. We do our own crops. When we receive the tobacco, from the moment we receive it at the, at the warehouse for processing and storing, mm -hmm. after it's been processed, it's three years. From mm -hmm. the moment we receive it until we start using it. Mm. Three years go by. Wow. So imagine we always have to have three years worth of inventory on hand to be used in every year consecutively. Wow. Mm -hmm. That way you can guarantee consistency on your product. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And that's why winning, you know, number one rating on Cigar Aficionado is kind of a blessing and a curse because you can't just up your production all of a sudden. You, the tobacco's not coming from nowhere. When a, when a small right. brand, a per uh, like um, uh, somebody that comes in and doesn't have or is not prepared for the increase in demand that a rating like that could uh, give you, that will happen a lot. Like, mm -hmm. I pr you probably know so more examples year, than I like do. <laughs> yeah, you probably know more examples than I do on that case where uh, brands that were awesome and they came out and they got a top one, top two, top three uh, cigar aficionado picked for that year. And all of a sudden, sales went to the roof. They couldn't keep up with demand. So... Right. You know, uh, the comp quality was compromised. Yeah, that's, you know, your options either be short or. And I know compromise. people that rather be short, and I know people that have done that that are prefer to uh, short the demand and not provide people with with uh, lower quality product. Yeah, not not the best route. And, <laughs> and I've been fortunate enough to to visit the factory. You have a massive, massive factory. So when you're talking about storing tobacco for three years, um, you have a lot of tobacco on hand <laughs> yeah how many square feet does that take up it's difficult to say it's yeah. <laughs> a, a lot it, it, head, it, it, it all depends on your consumption what your consumption of tobacco is going to be uh, mostly what takes the most space is filler mm -hmm. that's what you need the most of yeah. obviously sure. because that's yep. what compos com uh, composes most of the cigar it's filler uh wrapper and binder um i would say uh 4,000, 6,000 square foot uh, um, uh, warehouse will be enough to hold one year of uh, materials uh, that we require for, for production. Okay. You know? 4,000 square feet for one year. For one year. On wrapper yeah. and binder. <laughs> then filler, I would say about five times that quantity. Mm. Jeez. Yeah. That's a ton of space. Yeah. Uh, so we actually, we don't have enough space on the duty-free zone park that we are at, so we had to rely on outside storage. So nice. we're renting warehouses at other duty-free parks where we keep most of the tobacco at. Hmm. And now, are you, but you're expanding. I think when, when I was there, weren't you expanding one section to have a little more room? Yes, yeah. we are, but uh, that's to the point that we're going to have that ready in about two months. So we'll have a facility. We'll be able, after... That after we move to that facility, what it's going to enable us is restructure the whole factory, and we're going to be able to employ another 250 people at the end of it. That's awesome. Yeah. That's and we always hire people from our local community, so mm -hmm. we're helping the community grow. Mm. That's good. It's yeah. important. I like, uh, like getting uh, young people working, uh, mm -hmm. uh, tr train them. So you get the young people in, and you train them into this craftsman. Uh, teach them how to roll, how to pack cigars, how to process tobacco, and that way you're giving them the opportunity mm. to grow into the into the business as sure. well. Mm. Well, and that leads to a, you know an interesting question: Where, if you're gonna uh, walk into your factory and you're gonna say, "Hire me," I want to get into the, I want I want to get into this. Mm -hmm. and I want I don't want to just be the the guy who sweeps the floors. I want to. <laughs> where do you start somebody off? How does how does that process go? Well, uh, it all depends on what kind of experience they have. Mm -hmm. If it's somebody that's young, it all depends. It it comes to what area do I need people right now? Okay. 
Um, if it's in tobacco processing, if it's in cigar rolling, if it's in uh, the packing room, what options of what, what positions are available. What I like to do is the following. What I, when I have positions open, different positions open, I give the chance of the people that are already working inside mm -hmm. to take up those positions so they give themselves a chance to make a better living for themselves. Mm -hmm. And then I bring in the people from outside without experience to do the easier jobs that I can train them quickly to do. Sure. You know, so uh, we recently did that in the packing room because we had we had a recent expansion and we had to bring in another 25 people from outside. Before I brought in the people, I promoted about 15 of them uh, that were already working and they wanted a chance to be able to do these jobs because everything's paid by production. Mm -hmm. So these jobs will allow them to make more money uh, because they pay higher. Okay. But they're more difficult to do. They require training. They require time, mm -hmm. uh, uh, learning. So we did. Mm -hmm. Everybody passed the test, and they're now promoted, and we got another 25 people in working new. Okay. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's how you want to see things happening. You yeah. want to, you know, providing new opportunities and yeah. letting your people move up through the business. That's fantastic. Course, yes. mm -hmm. That's fantastic. And makes them happy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and hiring 250, I mean, you've got to be one of the, you, you got to be a fairly big employer down there. We are, yeah. We're one of the biggest employers of, uh, um, in the industry area, mm. you know. We have General Cigar and Altalis on top of us uh, in terms of uh, the amount of employees. Mm -hmm. And um, <coughs> maybe Tabadon, which is the Abedov, and we're kind of like around those numbers now. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm. Um, I'm really enjoying the cigar, kind of getting you. back to that a little bit. Uh, still picking up that, that kind of uh, natural, uh, almost like a deep grape kind of sweetness to it. And coffee and cocoa mm -hmm. is, is really what I'm picking up with this. What about you, Oliver? You're I'm never here, so I'm giving you a chance <laughs> to talk. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not getting the, the necessarily the grape. There's a little bit of... Um, Sweetness, so I, I mean, I can, I can, I can see that the um, the chocolate, the the coffee. It's a dark chocolate. The retro, I'm, I'm really loving. It's smooth. Mm. Uh, it really hits. It's hitting all parts of of the palate for, for yeah. me. It's. I've smoked quite a few of these. Um, it's been received well uh, you know, on the road. We've we've traveled together, Jose and I, uh, you know, all the way to the West Coast, um, and we've done events and it's been received well. So I'm very happy with everything. That, uh, that this cigar offers, uh, construction, flavor-wise, mm -hmm. price point too. Um, I mean, you're looking anywhere from six to eight dollars, and you have some big, big cigars too, the Grande, the Gordito. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, the burn is excellent. Construction is excellent. Yeah. I mean, you can't beat that at that price, especially. No, not at all. Yeah. It's, well, you know, and, and kind of along that line, you know, the. If I were going to do a Pastor Padron's Thou Shalt Not today, it would be Thou Shalt Not Judge a Cigar by its price. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's so often I think people think, oh, it's a $20 cigar, $25 cigar. It's got to be so much better than this, this $5 cigar. And not this $5 cigar mm -hmm. must really suck because <laughs> if it was really good, they'd be asking more money for it. And that is not no, at no, all always no. the case. That you do not, not need to spend big money to have a great cigar. No. And this is a really great example of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that these are all under 8 bucks, right, I, I think? I actually said the same words. Um, it was at a two guys anniversary party about four or five years ago. And uh, I think it was uh, Mr. Jonathan that asked me that question. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you pay? What is the most that you would pay for a cigar? And I said at that time, $15. And he said, seriously, there are so many <laughs> cigars out there, good cigars. Why would you pay only $15? And because I don't think that you have to pay a lot of money for a good cigar. Yeah, I totally agree. Totally agree. I mean, I don't, I'm not, you know, made of money. I can only spend so much. And so it, I, I have to be kind of, yeah, every once in a while I splurge, Memorial Day, I splurge. Mm -hmm. I got myself a Byron. You know, you, for there something you like that, you, you, you go big. Yep. But for the everyday thing, you know, you know a, a Jose Dominguez, you know, and others, you know, I try to stay under $10. Yeah. For your everyday smoke. For my yeah. everyday smoke. That's when we I come in. And I think you can. And, and, you know, I like to think that, you know, I don't smoke crap. But you can find really good stuff without exactly. spending big money. And that's mm -hmm. a, the that's a kind of a smoker that I'm the, that we're appealing to. That's mm. the, that's the segment that we're going after. It's the people, the everyday smoker, 
that it's on a budget that doesn't necessarily have big bucks to spend. Um, and, you know, we want to provide them a good, exceptional product for a reasonable price. Yeah. Mm. And the people that don't want to pay a lower price for a cigar, just wait. The FDA will change that and it'll all be expensive. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like you just wait. Yeah. Just give it time. It'll wait until <laughs> next week. <laughs> Uh, Jose Dominguez for seventeen dollars. What happened there? Yeah. What happened there? Right? Yeah. Like, We're not uh, in Canada. Oh, it's not going to think it's not a fifty dollars cigar. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. And and beautiful uh, the artwork uh, on this too. Um, I, I don't want to say it's simple, but it, it's it's simple in in colors and and uh, style. But I mm-hmm. I love the band mm-hmm. on both the natural and Maduro, and the box just has a, a great feel to it, look to it. It's simple. Simple, but it stands out. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, the the way that the box came out, uh, I think it totally complements how the product, the whole overall look of the product Absolutely. has. Very, very you know, elegant, classy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Boxes of 20 yeah. as right. well. So uh, very approachable when you're, when you're looking at an 18 or 18. When you're looking at a, a 6 to $8 cigar and it's, uh, you know, 20-count box, very approachable. Yeah. Yeah. Very much so. Now, one of the one of the things you know, you open up the box, and you know the cigars are all uh, half wrapped in you know cedar in cedar, cedar yeah. sleeves. And I noticed, you know, that uh, when you lit your cigar, you just took some of that cedar, rolled yeah. it up, lit it up. Yeah. Is that how you prefer to light your cigars with the with the cedar? I always, if I have the option, I always prefer to light my cigar with a cedar spill, just because of the smell, mm-hmm. and you don't have to drench your cigar in butane. Right. So uh, if I have the opportunity, like I said, because that's not something that if you're in a cigar shop, mm-hmm. that not all cigar shops right. have the cedar spills available mm-hmm. for you to light them. Uh, so a lot of people don't know that, that actual the cedar wrap that a lot of the cigars come uh, with, you can unwrap those, roll it into a little roll like I did the other one, just like that. Light it, and you light it like it was a match. Mm. Hmm. It'll give you the smell of the cedar. It won't drench your cigar in butane when you're putting the torch an inch away from your cigar and going around like this, mm-hmm. uh, it'll give you a much cleaner and uh, much less uh, uh, less contaminated taste. Mm. So you, do, you, do you notice a, a difference when you, when you light a cigar with a butane lighter? At the beginning, you do, yeah, because at the beginning, when you're doing the initial puffs, mm-hmm. you take in some of that, some of that uh, butane. There's an exhaust to it, yeah. Yeah, so the, yeah. there is a certain uh, taste to it, you know, mm-hmm. especially if the cigar has a very open draw. Yeah. You'll taste more of it. As you the, while you're smoking it, it dissipates and goes away. But at the beginning, you know, you get that that taste, sure. that that fuel taste into it while you're lighting the cigar. Hmm. No, See, it, I like it, to light my cello personally. You like that burned plastic <laughs> kind of taste, right? <laughs> An extra little head feel. Yeah. To it now. Reminds <laughs> me of my childhood yeah. days. Yeah. <laughs> is now it, it, that's interesting. Is, is that one of the reasons that that? You know, you would wrap a cigar and see her like that. I had, I had always thought it was more presentation to to affect the the to have the cigar kind of absorb some of that. But now I'm I'm, I'm what I'm or kind of hearing from you is else, yeah. it then gives you the thing you want to light the cigar with in the first place. It's just an added convenience. You add the cedar to the cigar for the smell because mm-hmm. when the cigar mm-hmm. you've got to remember the cigar when the tobacco is on roll when it's just tobacco mm-hmm. it's fermenting right. when you roll the cigar the, the tobacco is still fermenting at a lower rate mm-hmm. but it's still fermenting when you wrap the cigar around in cedar the cigar cigars are it's like a sponge right. it absorbs anything that is in the environment that's why we when you keep them they got to be in a controlled environment where you have no additives you have nothing in like no smell in the room or anything like that because mm-hmm. otherwise the cigars will absorb it so the cedar just adds that nice wood smell to it when you open right. the box. You, it hits you right in the nose. It's a nice smell, something. Uh, but it's just like an added, you know, added convenience. So people didn't know that. If you didn't know that you could use your cedar wrapped cigar and light it with that, now you do. <laughs> but make sure you take off because sometimes there's tape. That a little tape, that, yeah. You don't yeah, you got to take the little tape <laughs> off sure. and everything. Yeah. You just take it off. <laughs> Take it off the so I wouldn't first. say that yeah. I, that we originally that it was originally designed to do that. You know that would be a little bit too much. But uh, just so you know, you take the little tape off, you light it. There you go. There you go. You look classy. It's so sad. You look sophisticated. Yeah. People are like, you look "What something. is that guy doing? Did you see that?" <laughs> Sophistication, assholes. Does that really go together? No, no, not really. No, no. 
I didn't think so. No, but it's, it's sad that we have to explain to take that tape off or, mm. or take like, this the, is terrible. It's a horrible yeah. idea. Yeah. Like, just take the tape off. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one, you know, that, that may be a good segue. Why, why don't we, you know, kind of table the top five that I had planned to do for today? Let's, what is the top five things you want people to know or you wish people would know? About smoke, smoking cigars. About smoking cigars. Well, uh, do you, we're going we're gonna to run your little thing here. Today's top five oh. brought to you by Five Five Cigars. Oh. Choose from the mild white label, medium strength red label, or the full bodied and full flavored blue label. Siri Five Five has it all. Five and five equals a perfect ten, and that's what you get every time with Five Five Cigars. Here is today's top five list. All right, the top five things... We, the ash holes, wish everyone knew about smoking cigars. Well, the first one, you already said it, Dan. Expensive. Yeah. You, don't, you don't need to. Yeah, I and, thought you were going to back was. me up on that one. <laughs> good, you, don't need, you don't need to spend a lot of money to get a good cigar. That's the first thing that you should keep in mind when you're walking to a store. Mm-hmm. The fact that a cigar is $5, $6, up to $8, 9 doesn't mean that its, its quality is less comparable to any $20, $25 cigar out there. That would be my first recommendation. Yep, yep. You do not have to pay big money to have a world-class cigar. Mm-hmm. I've no. thought that for a long and time. And just because you're paying a small amount for a cigar doesn't mean that it's low quality. Yes. Correct. Yep. That is correct. Correct. Uh, do I, do I, will I do the five? We you can put them on the spot with five. Well, yeah. no, we, yeah. can, we can all. We can put all, you on the spot with five. <laughs> yeah, we can, that's we can a lot. All chip in with that. Mm-hmm. We can also, so one. Here's, so here's, so here's, do here's, not light your cigars. Yeah. With a um, a Zippo or any. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. definitely yeah. not. No, no, I no. love. Look, I no. love the sound of a Zippo. Yeah. I even love the feel of a Zippo. But, but you talk about tainting the flavor of a cigar. That's taking in so many fumes. So do not light your cigar. I mean, everybody knows the smell of a Zippo. Zippo. It's like right. you yeah. can smell it. So that's going to be across the room. You can yeah. smell it. Yeah. I mean, if 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 butane can affect the the, the taste, taste of yeah. your cigar, which really does not have a whole lot of smell at all, you know, Zippo just yeah. totally. Yeah, I I think I think that would be the best, if possible. The recommendation would be cedar spills. Mm-hmm. That would be the first best option. Second option, matches, mm-hmm. wood matches. Uh, third option, a butane lighter. You know, or you're stoked up. Or you're stoked up. <laughs> <laughs> done, that, done that plenty of times. Yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> I just use my candle, you know. <laughs> my hurricane lamp. <laughs> All right, so Kerosene. we got two down the road, right? We got right? two down. And the third, third, I would say, is don't smoke the band. No. And what I mean by that is, you know, a big popular brand of cigars comes out with something new and you get it and you think it's great because it has the band on it without even really taking the time to think about the cigar and how it's made and how it tastes. I mean, so often you find like when you blind taste test cigars, the cigar that you think is wicked awesome because it has the big name brand label on it, all of a sudden is not great compared to something else. And uh, don't buy the packaging either. I mean, right. the packaging is, uh, um, is an, uh, an added attractiveness, and we always want to make our product look beautiful to the eyes of the, uh, of the consumer and the people that, that, are, that are buying our product. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't necessarily, because it's sitting in a nice box, it doesn't necessarily mean that the product itself is going to be good. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, do not purchase something based on solely the appearance of the box that it, or the, the whatever it comes into. Right, you know? right. Judge the product itself, basically. And, and you know, one of the, one of the biggest examples for, of that for me is, is Opus. Yes. They yeah. just, their packaging. They go bananas in their packaging, yeah. out of this world. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. You know, frankly, I think the cigars are kind of. Mm, and they're good. Yeah, they're good. But the but level of hype that they get. The level of hype that they get off, is, yeah. is, I think, just as much because of the gorgeous packaging. Than anything else. Well, and all the social well, media hype. All the social media, yeah, but, <laughs> exactly. but you, why do Everybody people like taking pictures of those? Because they look yeah. pretty. But, you know, that's not why you smoke a cigar, because the band looks pretty well, and you, the box looks pretty. Did you see the Opus uh, Reserve now, the 20-year reserve something, the one yeah. that comes in the blue, the blue box? box. Yeah. yeah, it's uh, unbelievable. Amazing, yeah. The, the box packaging is, is out of this world. <laughs> I haven't tried the cigar. It comes, it comes shipped wow. with white gloves. 
<laughs> like they ship you gloves yeah. with some of their boxes. Love they it. do. With love the, it. With the Don Carlos Reserve. Yeah, they, yeah. You know, I, they, they seriously do it? I thought you were, you were screwing yeah, yeah. around. No, the they Don Carlos do? Reserve comes with white, uh, white gloves. Yep. Wow. Yeah. I mean, they need, hey, the boxes they need it. to look nice because you have to let it sit around and age so much longer. So <laughs> you're going to be looking at it a long time. You said that. <laughs> oh, my. You know, and, you know, kind of along with that, you know, one of, one of my, you know, uh, favorite brands is is a Romacraft, and their boxes are about as plain as you could possibly yeah. get. Yeah. Super you know? minimalist, yeah. Yep, yep. So you just don't smoke based yep. on how pretty the box looks That's or the baby true, yeah. or whatever. And for me, another one would mm-hmm. be pick your right size. Mm. Sometimes a lot of people are shown away uh, from the smaller ring gauges, like mm-hmm. I mentioned earlier. Um, smaller ring gauges, they often look more feminine. Right, or like if you take them, that, yeah. or people assume that they look more feminine, but mm-hmm. that is not the case. And like I said, you will get a lot more flavor from the same blend in a smaller ring gauge than you would on a bigger ring gauge. And it takes it harder to believe, but it takes more work to do a small ring gauge cigar mm. than it takes to do a big ring gauge cigar. Hmm. Yeah, makes sense. More skill. More skill. Less uh, that, uh, it's more yeah. work to do a bigger ring gauge, but it takes more skill to do properly a smaller ring gauge cigar like a Lancero. Right, because everything is, has to be right. Exactly, yeah. because anything can compromise a draw. Right. Anything in the construction, any flaw in the construction can compromise a draw. So when you're doing a Lancero, which is a uh, typically 38, 40 ring mm-hmm. gauge, 42, up to 42, mm-hmm. seven, seven and a half inches long, mm-hmm. When you're doing a cigar like that, it takes mad skills Mm -hmm. for you to be able to do that cigar properly and that the blend is right and the draw is is perfect. Mm. So it takes more effort, more skill in uh, for you to do that than to do a 60 ring gauge, for instance, because 60 ring gauge is very hard to roll 60 ring gauge cigar that is blocked. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, and the ratios of the primings that you're using exactly won't burn or burn too fast. You got more smaller. Yeah, if you have more, then it's Kind of level it's up. Yeah, that's yeah, a great point. Got more space point. to play with. Yeah. You know, because, you know, a number of years ago, you know, if, if it wasn't a 50 ring gauge at least, pre- somewhere between 50 and 60, I didn't smoke mm. it. Mm-hmm. You know, and and I, I really thought I was getting more bang for the buck, you know, more cigar, you know, with for my money. That, that is the exact mentality of most that's, consumers. Yeah. You're betting, getting a better bang for your buck. But sometimes you get a better product that is more suited to you. Mm-hmm. Uh on a smaller ring gauge. Right. So don't shy away from those smaller ring gauge because believe me, sometimes you'll be surprised. You will actually like a 44, 46 ring gauge much better than a 60 ring gauge. I can personally testify to that. You know, in the, in the couple of years I've been working uh, at two guys, I've had a lot more exposure to that. And I, I've been finding myself going away from the larger ring gauge cigars mm-hmm. yeah, for, for the very reasons you're saying. That's a great point. Yeah. And just because it's a large, larger ring gauge doesn't mean that it's going to be a longer smoke either. Not always. Correct. Not, right? not necessarily. Right. The, the, the reason is sometimes this, uh, we come back again to the draw. Mm-hmm. What makes the cigar burn is air. So if you have more air going through the cigar at one particular moment, it's going to burn faster. Mm-hmm. So you might, have, you might actually find yourself smoking a 60 ring gauge a lot faster than smoking a 42, 44 ring mm-hmm. gauge. Yeah. yeah, sometimes. So it's not necessarily bang for the buck. Yeah. You know, no. When you're talking about a bigger... Purchasing a bigger ring You're definitely getting more cigarette. tobacco, that's yeah. for sure. Yep. You mm-hmm. know, that's one thing that's not arguable. You're getting more tobacco. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So how many is that? Did that's we do, four. Like, is that's that four? four. So that we four need one, one more. We got one more? One more. Let me um, think. Don't. Uh, uh, what, let's, was let's what was play. the top five? Was uh, it don't, the top one five one, is. I'd say, number one, humidify your cigars. I mean, I can't tell you how many guys have come across it. They're like, oh, I smoke cigars. And then it's like, well, where is it? It's in a cabinet. And it's going to be terrible. Yeah. Yeah. It's like. say, don't lick your cigar. 101. If you don't. too. Listen, well, if you don't you, have... If you want to use your own cutter, you can lick all you want. You know, <laughs> slobber it up, make it drip. Just do that I in don't the privacy care. of your own but home. But if you're going to do that with the store cutter, the community cutter, or my cutter... Oh, no, no. No, no. That's the worst thing when somebody says, hey, can I, can I borrow your cutter? Oh, of course. I'm a nice guy. I'm a Christian. I, you could use my cutter. And then they go... Oh, oh. I just let them keep oh, the cutter. Oh, Jesus had to die for that. That's why I carry, that back. That's why sometimes I carry two. <laughs> <laughs> I carry my own personal one and the one to lend to the other people. 
That's not a bad name. <laughs> <there. laughs> oh my gosh! There you go. Well, why don't we take a break? And when we come back, we will announce the Asheville of the week. We'll continue our talk with Jose Dominguez Jr. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. In a time where humidors are overflowing and retailers' shelves are on the verge of buckling, there is one brand that stands out amongst the rest. Sereno Cigar Company offers four distinct blends. The Connecticut, the Medio, Maduro, and Maduro XX. The Sereno Royale Maduro XX, named number one cigar of 2016 by the Ashholes Radio Podcast, is a creation of elegance and sophistication. Crafted at the La Corona Cigar Factory in Esteli, Nicaragua, the Sereno Royale Maduro XX comes to life by the experienced hands of master blender Omar Gonzalez. Aleman and industry veteran Anthony Serena. To create this masterpiece, a blend of filler tobaccos from the fertile soils of Esteli and Jalapa are aged for over five years and then draped with a dark and luxurious Ecuadorian Habano Oscuro wrapper grown from the famed Habano 2000 seed to bring you an endlessly complex and full-bodied experience. A post-roll aging process of two additional years allow the blend to marry, creating unmistakable notes of rich cocoa, leather, and coffee that tantalize the palate, leaving you anticipating the next draw. Visit SerenoCigars.com for a list of retailers, and you can always find Sereno Cigars available at TwoGuysCigars.com. Bohemian is the original Brazilian big ring gauge cigar with the unfinished foot, curly tailed head, and value, value, value. There is a Brazilian reasons to buy and smoke Bohemian, and here are just a few. Created in the Cuban tradition, this lush, dark Brazilian Maduro leaf surrounds a five-year-old Sumatra binder with Dominican and Nicaraguan well-aged long filler leaves. So, what should you expect from a Bohemian? A departure from the conventional, a flavorful journey into a sweet, nutty, almost caramel finish. Bohemian, the original, unconventional cigar. Take the journey. Stay tuned for more of the Ash Holes. Yay! On the United Podcast Network. Cigar smokers, how about if we go over a few cigar store sounds? Can you guess what this is? Oh, yeah. You think you got it? Okay, do you know what this is? Now for the cigar. What do you think of this cigar? I'm lighting up a La Giana Havana cigar. A La Giana Havana natural cigars are, oh yeah, so smooth. And oh yeah, the Maduro version is a bit beefed up. But oh yeah, they're delicious too. When asked what my favorite cigar is, I always say it's La Giana Havana. Oh yeah. In a world where the success of a cigar brand is recognized by its flavor comes two that go head to head. One man smoking two cigars at the same time. Two rappers united in name, but separated by taste. One cigar known as the natural. The natural is no lightweight. It boasts full flavor and taste. The United Cigar Natural. Now comes the Maduro. Darker and even more bolder. With in-your-face flavor. United Cigar. Nothing could prepare you for what awaits you in the box. Both box pressed. Both 65 million years in the making. Uh, that may be wrong. Well, I'm going with it anyway. Action, adventure, and bromance. That's right. Bromance. United Cigar. Available in natural or Maduro. Available only at appointed United Cigar retailer shops nationwide. Rated D for delicious. Under 18, not admitted even with a parent. United Cigars. You don't have to choose. Smoke them both. In 1848, in honor of the English poet Lord Byron, a cigar brand named Byron was first created. Through three centuries, Byron has gone through many hands, but today it is back with the family that first created them. Returning to the early days, now the brand, in a very limited quantity, is produced in a small factory in Costa Rica. Nelson Alfonso offers three Byron blends honoring all three centuries of Byron, Siglo 19, Siglo 20, and Siglo 21. Other cigars sit in an aging room for 60 days, 
but every Byron cigar sits in an aging room for a period of at least one full year, then and only then, into ultra-luxurious porcelain jars and state-of-the-art cigar humid tubes packaging. Sure, Byron's packaging is unique and costly to produce, but nothing else will do for a cigar of this quality and taste. Byron Cigars. Cigars of poetry. Sophisticated. Byron. Well, fear not, friends. The ash holes are back. So here once again with his Maduro Bellicoso, your host, Pastor Padrone, your man, Dan. Okay. Welcome back to the Ash Holes. You can find us on iHeartRadio, Facebook, YouTube, iTunes, Podbean, and Spotify. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at the Ash Holes and on Instagram at Ash Holes Radio. We're smoking the Jose Dominguez Bellicoso Maduro yes, with sir. the man, the Jose man Dominguez Jr. <laughs> yes, the man himself. Thank you, Thank you for having me again, Dan. Yeah, it's always great to have you. I hope you come back. Yeah, yeah, I will. I will. If Oliver lets me. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> Oliver's not he usually here, it. so we yeah. usually have plenty of room, you yeah. know? <laughs> You know, no, I'm always I'm yeah. always happy to do this. With I you think guys. you've been on the show almost as much as Oliver. Zing, zingo. Yeah. So for me, you know, as I'm smoking this, the the coffee notes are really increasing, and you know that that uh, cocoa sweetness is still there on the finish, and that's kind of yep. remaining constant. But uh, some of that earthiness has kind of yep. been replaced by more kind of a coffee mm-hmm. kind yeah. of a taste that uh what you're picking up um in my case a uh, little pepperiness mm. when you approach the middle and i think it's when the blend achieves its full potential uh the bud it becomes a more fuller uh full flavored cigar uh still not overpowering still very mellow to your uh you know through the retro hail but um i think uh it Brings out the the like I said the full potentials. You still that got got that lingering sweetness, that chocolatey mm-hmm. notes, uh, coffee, uh, but with a little bit more pepper to it. Hmm. I definitely have the pepper coming through the retro. And mm-hmm. Yeah, I can pick that up. How about you, Aaron? Yeah, yeah I'm right there with you. I mean, the, the earthiness is still there for me. Yep. Um, Strength wise, maybe a low medium. Okay. Medium. Yep. Medium tops. But, but very full flavor. On very this, full yeah. flavored, yeah. Um, but it's not going to knock you anybody. You can smoke this no. anytime. Yep. It'll be fine. Smoke a three or four or five, a whole box, one after the other. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We've all done that. <laughs> yeah, we, yes. I, don't know, I, I, I give this a good medium, like straight, straight medium. I'm getting the, the, the pepperiness to me is more of like a, a white pepper. It's a soft pepper. I'm getting a lot of wood, uh, mm. woody charred notes great barbecue notes uh, almost the sweetness to me is turning into like a vanilla bean um, a vanilla bean a kind of soft, sweetness real mm. soft uh vanilla i could see that but yeah. uh, but mm. very woody all right i think yeah. i can agree with both of those things yeah i mean i'm still you know coffee is the you know ground coffee is the is the number one thing i'm picking up but i can i can really pick especially that vanilla bean kind of uh sweetness there that you're picking up i can i can agree with that hmm very good. Yeah, me too. All right. Well, you know, every show we do an ash hole of the week. The ash, ash hole of the, the week. The ash hole of the week. All right. And it's, the, you, know, it's some, you know, it's a little light, you know, something, you know, somebody who's done something incredibly dumb <laughs> or stupid uh, or yeah. just needs highlighted. You know, sometimes it's more of they a, you know. They need to be highlighted. Uh, yeah, they, yeah. They need to be highlighted because it was just so bad. And um, uh, this is a real interesting one. Uh, this mom... Um, Kara uh, Kaczynski, who lives in North Carolina, okay. was having a graduation party, <clears throat> high school graduation party for her son Jacob, and he had gotten a 4.89 GPA and graduated mm. summa cum laude. Okay, wow. okay, I in, in the class that he was in, and so she, you know, the down in North Carolina, one of the the uh, regular grocery ch- uh, chains down there is Publix. Yeah, and I lived in Florida for a while. Mm-hmm. Publix was my favorite Everywhere. place. I love Publix, and they have a website, and you could order the cake that you wanted, and you can customize the cakes. And so she goes on there and says, you know, I wanted to say, congrats, Jacob, summa cum laude, class of 2018. And then she gets this note back, okay, that says, um, we can't print that because the word 
cum in cum laude is is nasty. Seriously, <laughs> it's I nasty. So, Seriously. and this is now. Keep in mind, this is an, this is an automated response. Yeah. You know, so it's so it's like it, it, it says we're gonna we're gonna print summa dash laude. <laughs> <laughs> and so but there's a there's a space there for special instructions you know and you know you'd think that on most of these websites there is and so uh she she explains please write out summa cum laude the cum is not a you know a cuss word it's, or it's, nasty. Latin. it's latin, not talking it's, latin. Latin. Yeah. it's latin just means you know, so, <laughs> you know, so you know and she kind of explained what it was and didn't think much more about it so you know the they get the cake at the store it's all boxed up and everything they bring it home the graduation party's going on they open the cake and it says congratulations jacob summa dash laude oh, they still did. they would not print Jeez. the word the come. word come it's embarrassing which wow. i mean it's it's going to be a technology issue for First and foremost, because it's mm-hmm. still blocking it out. But then it falls on that employee who didn't read the special instructions and, and didn't know what summa cum laude was. Right. Because anybody looking at summa laude, it's like, oh, I know what they really wanted here. Uh, well, <laughs> it's like, but no, they probably or no maybe it just simply doesn't care. You know, yeah. you got to take that yeah. into I'm account. I'm just going to do exactly what it says. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Either, I don't want to get in trouble. Either everything was automated and no one ever saw it. In which case, that's bad. Because if you have a space for special instructions, but it yeah, doesn't and mean you don't crap, do it, yeah. that's bad. On the other hand, if somebody did see it and then decided, oh, I'm not going to write that and, and didn't bother to read it or, it or still doesn't it, know what it means. It's, it's, <laughs> it, you know, after the mom explains it, I mean, that's how can you not write summa cum laude? Right. On a cake, oh, such, such because a you honor. think you think you're so being you know X-rated <laughs> if you write summa cum laude. Go I mean, to your local just, baker. It's and set just up a so bad. I'm <laughs> so disappointed. And because of that, I'm naming Publix the ash hole of the week. Yeah, yeah and I can't. Enough. I just nice pick. I just don't understand how you can be that dumb. Uh, well, they're well, not seem like I'm louder, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it all depends. <laughs> like like uh, he was saying, uh, maybe it's a technology error. Mm-hmm. Maybe somebody just didn't read the special instructions. Or, you know, we might be dealing with somebody who just simply doesn't care. <laughs> well, it, that's it's entirely it's, possible. It's a local grocery store. Yeah, probably. Somebody <laughs> doesn't care. I mean, <laughs> anybody that deals with not government either. offices knows what that feels oh. about. <laughs> Anybody with job security, they don't care. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. You know. I'm I'm glad you didn't pick Roseanne Barr. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Not this time. Thank right, you. Because yeah. one, she, one she shouldn't be highlighted, even though I'm I'm bringing her up. But I think she became <laughs> an asshole many years ago when she butchered the national anthem. Mm. Oh So anybody my gosh, that, that continued to first. right, anybody oh. that even continued to follow her or appreciate her or do anything, you know, for, go I mean, watch a show again. Like, was anybody really surprised? I wasn't no, shocked at all. Was that's like, that's oh, what it was I mean. just a matter of time. It was a, yeah, it was a matter that's a ticking time bomb. <laughs> yeah. like, like to me, she, she you know when she butchered that the, the national oh, anthem. When you, when you don't you know again don't pay respect to the to that then you know you're, you're gone. Right. Yep. Then you're the actual. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yes, there's a reason she was passed up. Yeah. Yeah. And you just I kind just of I love it. good yeah, good yeah, thanks. thanks thanks and with that I, I won't be watching any NFL. This year, <laughs> no, I think, no. I think yeah, I think I watched two games last year. Really? That oh, was it. There you, were a couple. One because I, I had friends that were Steeler fans, so I watched the Patriots Steelers game. Mm-hmm. Other than that, my Sundays, no, Monday, and I didn't you watch listen any. to no more NFL. No, no, no. Yeah, no, you listen instead of watch. No. Nope. Yeah. No. Nope, no. Nope, nope, no. Nope. No. Nothing. No. And it, it's not that I highlighted it either. You know, talked about it, but just the whole thing's just it's it's it, it's bothersome. It's gross. Yeah, I, I totally Getting agree. Paid that much. You know, it, it, it's it's. What's amazing to me is how bitchy they get. Right. Can I say that? I don't even know if I sure, can say that. Sure, why not? But it's like, <clears throat> you know, you, you, you're, it, 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 your opinion about whatever issue, social issue, police brutality, what, yeah. you want to you wanna spend some time, you know, saying what you think about that or who you should support. or That's fine. But to do that during the public, you know, to, to, to use your free speech during the game, and say we're not going to stand for the national anthem during the and national anthem during the national anthem by, by all yeah means, during, do, do during whatever you want you know and then you know when when people who are watching the game exercise their free speech by turning yeah. it off 
or not they watching get offended. it, and then yeah. you you make less money. Yeah. Don't complain. Right. We're yeah. just doing the same thing you did. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like you know, people. I, I can see both sides of it. And if it was the government saying you have to stand or not be on the field, that's then I'd be against it. You know, free speech. Do what you want to do. Fine. But the NFL is essentially a business. It's a, it's. it's it they can make their own decisions for what they do with their employees. And it so is an organization, yeah, privately. Like private organization. They have the freedom yep, yep. to make their own rules. <laughs> it's like right. just like any other job. Yep, yep. And, you know, so on your own time, do whatever uh, you want. Not according to the collective bargaining agreement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> uh, you know, they can't do what they want. For the most part. <laughs> right. You, know, no, you have to I, wear I, a uniform. I, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I, I never served, but, uh, but I have a tremendous amount of respect for those that uh, – that have and, and that that represents the reason why we do have free speech. So, you know what? Get up, yeah. pay your yeah. respect for your well, respect. Depend, do your I was job. Say, pay your respect for the minute, minute and a half. But it depends who's singing. It could be two, two and a half minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's, ex, it's oh, extended. Gosh. So yeah, who was it? Was it Fergie or the, the, the really yeah. awful rendition recently? Yeah. Oh, so bad. Mm. Anyway, that's my two cents. There you go. Well, there's no Miles with Styles this week. What? Yeah. What does she do? Well, you see. And therein is the, is the issue, you know. She, you know, who knows? I mean, she she crosses so many different time zones yeah. mm, that she yeah. basically forgot today was Wednesday. Cool. Well, I kind of did too with that three. <laughs> Maybe it's not Wednesday where she's at. <laughs> it is Wednesday where she's Tuesday, at. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's ten. It's ten p.m. Wednesday where she's at. Well, she's probably sleeping but or having a drink at a bar or something. She's actually listening to the show right now. Oh, she's right. listening to the show. She hi, listens Miles. to the show every. This is the show every week. Oops, Miles. Hi. I'm sorry. Hi. I miss you. <laughs> I got concerned when you know she posted something on Twitter. You know, yesterday she posted a you know a, a throwback Thursday post. <laughs> yeah, I said, um, really you know, you know it's Tuesday. Day. Too, many, <laughs> too many hours on a plane. Yes. And she's like, hey, what? What? don't give me that crap. You're having a really bad Thursday <laughs> when you realize it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Very true. She's, she is in South Africa. And she's, she's a surfer. She's a pro surfer. And okay. she's in the middle of a tournament right now. And right now she's in second place. Good. Wow. Um, awesome. Point zero three, right? Am I getting that right? Um, no. Point zero two. From first place. Wow. So it's very, very close. And the, it's a very, very wow. tight competition. Everyone's, you know, gunning for it and everything. You but, go, Miles. Um, yeah. Yeah. You go, Miles. Yeah. You go, Miles. You go, Miles. Stay on that surfboard. So, <laughs> you know, know. Her, her, her <laughs> styles. 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 Yeah. <laughs> styles. So no giggle today. That's the that's the one thing people are gonna miss. There's Come actually on, Steve, people. Give us the giggle. There's <laughs> actually people who, who listen for the giggle. Okay. She giggles. She has when a she like says the actual giggle. She has a cute. <laughs> but you know, it's it started off. You know, one of the interesting things about Michelle is, is that she's deaf, and oh. and so, but she speaks very well. You'd never know by listening. Yeah, you'd never guess. But the first time she was able to say the Ashles right, she giggled, <laughs> <laughs> and then and, and and kept it in the recording, and and she's done it every time ever it's since. Weird. It doesn't uh, sound like any other words. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, so you know, <laughs> I guess it's hard to say. You know, I don't know. Is, uh, what do you, what do, you do? do you have a giggle there for us? No, you just suck no on giggle. your cigar. You're yeah. not. You're not. Too, you're not. not paying attention. <laughs> All right. So he, he I, I didn't think you right. wanted me to giggle. <laughs> Can you do a Michelle giggle? Oh yeah. <laughs> 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 that's and that's as close as we can get today. That's a very manly giggle. That's as close as we can get today. Now, aren't you glad you asked? Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. So, Michelle, say hi to your dad. I know he's out there with you. Hi, Michelle. And good luck. Hope you end up in first place. You can do it. Just surf awesome. If you ain't first, you're last. <laughs> there you go. The, is just first. The, you your kids? the <laughs> eye candy has spoken. You lose. You're out of the family. <laughs> judged. You've been judged. Words of confidence and encouragement from Oliver. <laughs> yeah. The eye candy of the ash holes. <laughs> Father, of the, year. Father right of the here. year. Father of the year, yeah. <laughs> wow. Padre del año. <laughs> It's so funny because my so you know I bought, my daughter's not as competitive as my son. So I talk about my son with sports, right. but he knows when I'm pissed, and he knows when I'm disappointed <laughs> and just disgusted with the way he's oh, playing. Oh, because he'll come, he'll, he'll be in the dugout. Like if he pops up or just you know does you know hits a you know grounder, but maybe still gets on first and it's fielder's choice. So I'm like, it really wasn't a single. 
Like, I'll pull that from him. I go, that's field his choice. It's not a single. <laughs> <laughs> so you would clip his wings oh, in midair, yeah, yeah. right? Oh, yeah, well, he has to wow. know. He's, yeah, look, there's, uh, there's no trophy for that. Uh, how else will you have fun if you don't know? But he'll come, he'll come into the dugout, and if I'm in the stands or if I'm, you know, if, if I'm coaching for, like, town, I, I won't even make eye contact. I just keep looking. But I see him peripherally. Like, he looks at me. Like, he's looking for some sort of – no. No, no you're not sure. getting it. <laughs> wow. What was that? Oh, wow. That's really tough. Like, you know what you did? Like, you that's, know, just, that's that's tough love, man. That's yeah, really but that's tough, tough hey, love. That's what it is. Just talk to the hand, boy. Yeah. Talk to knows. the hand. <laughs> but he knows. He knows. <laughs> and he if knows he, what? And if he <laughs> stops playing baseball down the line and says he hates you, then you know why. <laughs> 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 but after you get out of the stage, out, out, after the game, you're all lovey-dovey again? Yeah. No, yeah, then we break down the game, and he's like, no, he's like, boy, that's not. I'm not going to let that happen again. You know, I dropped my elbow or I did this. I'm like, as long yeah. as you know. But what 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 bothers me is, is for him because I want – I want him to to win mm-hmm. for him because you know he he's good his team's good but don't fool around before and don't if you don't take it seriously as you're going into it mm-hmm. yeah then don't show me the emotion of sadness after the game right if you're if you're hyped up and you're you're excited and you're going into the game like I'm going to do my best right and then you go into the game and you don't succeed that's one thing but if you go in fooling around no how do you, how, how we now approach this there's a, there's a balance here serious. though I mean you you want to go in you know Having fun, you you want to be you know it's it's no, you're one of there's those. no fun you, in baseball. Yeah, you, you're well, one no, of have you ever seen you a wanna, game? You, <laughs> you, <laughs> <laughs> I think I think you do better when Come you're on. having fun yes. doing it. You're but you want to exactly. be but you want to be serious. You, right. You want to be serious right. while you're having fun. How how do you how do you coach him on so, that? So well, I told him I said you're at a very tough stage right now because he's he's 13. So he's going right. from you know being mm. you know being a very good player on a smaller field to a larger field now. And more competitive because kids are starting to fall off because it's a, it's a more difficult mm-hmm. game. Mm-hmm. I said, you're at a difficult stage because you don't know how to turn that switch yet all right. the time mm-hmm. from having fun. Like you, I said, you see the pros, they, they're laughing in the dugout, but as soon as they put a foot on that field, like they so switch serious, and they yeah. just want to rip, rip someone's yeah. throat out. You know, if they're you behind, have to, they're not having fun. <laughs> right. And if, you, if they lose, they're yeah. figuring out why they lost, how they can make it better, and they're you know, working hard. So you just had he I told me you just have to learn how to how to make that switch. Yeah, mm-hmm. balance it out. Yep. Very good. Sean Belichick, you know, like football, it's like there's no fun ever. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah, that I get to. <laughs> if you smile before the season's over, it's yeah, you get yeah. A loser. Uh, I gave him I gave him <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, the other team was very good and we just you know, but you know, we kicked our butts. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> that's a, yep. Next week, now. I gave him a next pouch week. of chewing tobacco yesterday. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, yeah, there he's you go. throwing up all over the place. Uh, like, all right, so now you know. <laughs> no cigars <laughs> yet. Yeah. Have yeah. you had? Have you had a cigar with him yet? Not on, the, not on the air. Yeah. Not hearing that. No, yeah, he's, he's, <laughs> he's taking a puff. He's, you know, he's, he's taking a puff in there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, there you go. Just out of curiosity. Yeah, yeah I, I've had to do that with my youngest. You know, you know, you know how you give your kid. They, they, they're bothering you. What is, you know, you're drinking a beer. Can I have a sip? Can I have a sip? <laughs> and, you, and you finally, you're like, okay, I'm going to give it to you. Get you're the, you're going to vomit. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, that's worked for all my kids except Rachel. And so she's, you know, she's a bugging, me, bugging <laughs> me for the, for the puff of the cigar. So I finally do it, knowing that she's not going to like it, and then I won't have to hear about it again. Takes a puff. Ooh. That was really good. I <laughs> taste this, this, and this. Oh god! And I like you. Know, she's better are you than you. Serious? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and she, and so now she's like, you know, she's serious. She, she, she wants. You know, she for her 18th birthday, she wants a cigar. Yeah, that's good. Something wow. to look forward to. That's nice. There you go. Yeah, that's not bad. Like Uh-oh. daughter, like father. Yep. Six more years to go. <laughs> <laughs> Hold that over her head. No. Yeah, we'll see. You know, basically, the, the, the big thing holding me back from giving her a cigar now, aside from the fact that it's illegal, <laughs> is, you know, my wife would kill me. Right. And I like yeah. my head where it is. Attached to my shoulder. Yeah, I wonder you know, what, how it works. It really wouldn't with, work with well in my products, hand. Because I know, like, in some states, you can do alcohol if the, the right. parent is actually giving it. But mm. I don't know if it works with tobacco. Hmm. I know. I, don't think I know in New Hampshire. Probably not. I know in no. New Hampshire it's illegal to give somebody under tobacco 18 under all, eighteen, yeah. even if it's you know in the home or whatever. Yeah, which is crazy. That I don't know about okay, Massachusetts, but, but, <laughs> but it's not. Well, there tobacco. you go. Um, final thoughts here on this. Bellicoso. I'm, I'm putting both thumbs, and I'm going to take my shoes off, so I'm going to give both toes. <laughs> <laughs> thumbs up on this one. Double thumb, double toe up. I, 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 look, I, I've, I, you know, again, traveled with uh, with Jose. I, I've uh, you know I've been presenting it uh, a lot. I, I'm I'm a big fan of it. It's been received well. Um, 
I just I, I love the burn. I love the the, the taste. It's, there's nothing overpowering, but it has a a, a great um, profile on it. So uh, big thumbs up. Yeah, for me. Yeah, thumbs up yep. here too. Uh, I mean, you can smoke it any time. It's good to mix it up for me. It's not mm-hmm. my exact flavor profile that I'm shooting for, but it's good to to kind of mix up the variety that you have. Yep. And uh, for me, it's still one of my favorite blends. Uh, mm-hmm. Second favorite size in the whole in the whole uh, lineup. Mm-hmm. Um, not more to say to it than that. Well, yeah, and, and I'm going to give it two big thumb, thumbs up, too. This is just the burn has been great. Look at how thin that burn line yeah. is. Mm. I mean, just, yeah. it's just been great. Yeah, excellent construction. Haven't had to touch it up or anything like that, and lots of smoke. The draw has been great, and part of that's your own, you know, you and Tubo roll everything, and right? Roll, yeah. And, yeah, and um, so there's never a draw problem with any of uh, his stuff, and the, the tastes and flavors on this is great. It's a great medium-bodied anytime cigar. Yeah. I mean, I, you, I could smoke another one of these afterwards and not feel like I'm... Yeah. That's what we encourage people myself. to do. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Why have line. one when you <laughs> can have two? <laughs> smoke, a whole, smoke a whole box in the afternoon. <laughs> That's what they're designed for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. And yourself there, uh, Mr. Producer? Very <laughs> flavorful cigar. Flavorful. Flavorful. <laughs> flavorful. Flavorful cigar. Amazing retro and mm. thumbs up from Master Control. Very nice. Thank you very much. Thank you for the kind words, guys. The voice of logic and reason has spoken. Thank you for being with us. We're always glad when you're here. Next time you're in town, will you be on? Of course. Anytime you invite me, I'll be here, my friend. That's fantastic. I love this show. That's awesome. We love having you on. Now, next week, we are going to be joined again by uh, Eric Wentworth of Hammer and Sickle Cigars, and we're going to be smoking the Hermitage Toro by Hammer and Sickle. That's a great cigar. It's always great when Aaron is here, and Oliver will be gone. So there'll be more liquor for all. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah, and if you're out there in New York, I'll be at Havana Dreams. Uh, We're doing an event there Friday night, the 8th. Very nice. So come out and join us. Fantastic. So go to your local brick and mortar, pick one of those Hermitage Toros up for next week so you can smoke it with us live Wednesday at 4 o'clock right here where you're listening now. Now, if your local shop doesn't have them in, you can always order them at twoguyscigars.com. Make sure you have one for next week. You've been listening to the Ash Holes Unfiltered Cigar Radio Broadcasting from the Sereno Royale stage at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. You can download this and any episodes you may have missed on iHeartRadio, Facebook, YouTube, iTunes, Podbean, and Spotify. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at The Ash Holes and on Instagram at Ash Holes Radio. We'll see you next week. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.